Yesterday I set up my master built 800 and I had already planned on not using the master built control unit and I also had determined that I was not going to use the door sensors. Uh, so what I went ahead and did <clears throat> was after or while I was setting it after I set it up um, I went ahead and disconnected this sensor on the hopper lid um, what I did was I just pulled the two screws out here lifted it up and disconnected it and then pulled the wire out and then the other sensor is down here by the ash bin and that one you can just simply reach up underneath here and disconnect it and then I pulled those two wires out and they come out here like so and all I did and I have to redo my tape job this is the one I had to fix yesterday was I pulled back this little housing here the sleeve so that way it exposed the two metal connectors and I placed them flat together and wrapped them around with electrical tape so it was 32 degrees out here so I'm going to go back and redo them again so and you can see I did the same thing on this one so they both connect here and this is your fan connector and then they run up here and come across and they pop out here and normally you would plug them into the master built unit here but right here this cable is an adapter cable for the fireboard uh, device I got the fireboard to drive and what you're going to do is plug um, these two in here there's a male and a female connector and then this barrel plug here is going to go into the side of your drive or of your fireboard right here um, so yesterday I did that I hooked it up just like you see it right now and I turned the fireboard on this was output without putting any charcoal in our lighting I just wanted to test to make sure it was going to run the fan and I got the uh, fireboard going and it said that the fan was running at a hundred percent so I got down on my hands and knees and the fan was not running so I went ahead and disconnected everything from the adapter cable and plugged it into the master belt unit and powered that up and turned it on it was not running um, I did notice though when I lifted the lid because I still have my lid switch connected for right now that it did beep so I decided to I checked everything unplugged everything replugged it back in and um, everything was solid everything clicked into place hooked it back up to the drive still wasn't running so uh, what I did was I went ahead and disconnected everything from here and plugged the fan directly into um, into this cable. I took the adapter cable and plugged the the drive or the fan into it, and then I took one of these two because there's two sensor cords here. I took one of them and plugged it into the adapter, and it kicked on. So I'm like, all right, everything's working. So I hooked that back up just the way it was and went back over here and connected the adapter back here, plugged it back into the drive, nothing. So I'm like, all right, what's going on? So I went and uh, took the uh, uh, adapter cable back over to the main connections here, unplugged them and stuck them back into the adapter cable, plugged it back into the fireboard and the fan kicked right back on. So. By reason of deduction, I'm like, something's got to be wrong with, something had to be wrong with one of these two sensor cables. So that's when I un, uh, unplugged the one that was working and plugged the other one in. Because what this adapter here does is it takes those two sensor cables <clears throat> and condenses them down to one cable. Because one of these cables is for the fan and one of these cables is for those door sensors. Um, so while it was hooked up down here, I took off the sensor cable that was good and I plugged the other one in and the fan immediately stopped running. So I knew there was something wrong and everything that I've been seeing on the different forums said, check your connections when you go to tape them up to bypass. Um, 
So eventually I'm probably just going to get a barrel plug and what the barrel plug does is almost like Chinese finger cuffs. Uh, you'll plug, cut the wires so that way they're exposed and put one in from the left and one in from the right and then crimp them down and then you absolutely have a solid connector. Um, this is a cheap and easy way doing it with the duct tape. But as you can see, if you're not making sure that you're holding them perfectly together, they can move while you're wrapping them with the electrical tape. So um, for right now, I did my burning yesterday. I used the, I set up a program on there because you're supposed to burn in at, what was it, 250 for an hour and then go up to 400 for 30 minutes, I think. And I just wanted to test and see how the program worked. Um, and I took my son to the Y to work out and uh, the program worked fine. And then I had it, I set the temp down to hold at 100 after, after it reached that 400 degrees for 30 minutes. And by the time I got home, it had cooled down to like 125. So I just killed the program and turned everything off and went ahead and uh, seasoned up my grill after it cooled off. So... <clears throat> Part of me does not want to um, cut these cords. You don't have to. You can do it with a duct tape just as it is. Um, I see some people taking those two connectors and actually sliding them together since they have a slot in it. Um, but that way, if I ever something ever happens and I want to return it back to, to uh, original state from the factory, I can do that uh, because you don't have to cut the, the cables. What I'll end up doing is wrapping these cables up and tying them up. And there's a little clip right here. You'll notice it when you're when you're putting it together. It's right behind the E and the S here. And you can wire your cables up together and just hang them from that. And they're out of the way. And then because it's cold here, I take my drive inside with me. And I'm just going to leave these. I may make something to tie them up. Um, or something or just leave them hanging here. They sat there fine. I put the grill cover on last night um, Yeah, so that's it. That's it after I had the whole thing set up came up Unscrewed that and disconnected it and you just pull it down. You'll feel it right down here You'll pull it through there and then I came and disconnected this switch here for the ash bin And pulled that out and that's what these two are. This is that's for the hopper door and the shorter one is for the ash bin and you're just going to plug those in like normal and make sure that the contacts are touching each other wrap them up in electrical tape and then when you come over here instead of following the directions to hook them up to the master built connection you just hook them up to the adapter cable which i got from uh, barbecue hq uh, they sell the drive there and if you buy the drive that you can get the uh, the cable for free. It looks like you're paying ten dollars or nine ninety nine for it, but what they do is deduct the price off of the fireboard. So hopefully this helps somebody else out. I had a couple of people ask me to do that. Um, I know it's easier to see a lot of times when you see somebody doing something versus reading it. So I've been happy. I'm going to try and cook something for the first time. I've never used a smoker before, but been watching a lot of videos and reading a lot of comments and commentary and stuff so any questions feel free to ask